Four directors from the Young Enterprise Company Graphite from the Ross Royal Academy. I'm Ross McKee. I'm Christina Fraser. I'm David Barkley. And I'm Sarah Bowman. Our company produces slate coasters, placemats, and cheese boards. Our aim is to provide a high quality product as well as a personalised service which can make each customer feel valued. Another aim of ours was profit maximisation. Each member of our 11 strong team made use of their individual skills in order to contribute effectively and help achieve the goals stated in the company vision. Initially, we held meetings to identify which pupils were keen to join the team and also to discuss potential product ideas. These included recycled notebooks, hampers, table decorations and a Christmas CD. We analysed these ideas by looking at potential demand, production viability and potential costs. Eventually, we decided upon slate coasters. We began to plan market research and appointed directors for our company. We're very confident of a good demand for a product after very positive feedback from teachers and pupils at parents' evenings. The potential demand for placemats, cheese boards and customised designs was also brought forward. This allowed us to develop our existing product as well as allowing us to extend our product portfolio. We managed to source materials at a very low cost also. This allowed us to pass low prices onto our customers which gave us a competitive edge. On our first night of selling, we received a fantastic £300 worth of orders at a school parents' evening. The team and product established, we were ready to ensure the success of graphite. Our school technician cut the slate with a table saw which left straight edges, which feedback indicated were very popular. We were also shown how to weather the edges of the slate, which we offered at a higher price. We employed an expert to etch designs onto our coasters and placemats for an agreed price. We looked into similar products in retail settings and found that our direct competitors charged very high prices for similar products. After the Dragon's Den competition last year, Graphite took on the judges' comments and then decided to raise our own prices. Our slate was presented in tartan ribbon after adhesive rubber feet were added to stabilise the product and to allow the coaster to be used for hot drinks without damaging the table it was on. From the onset, it was essential that enough research was done in order to determine the company's target market. Different types of coaster shapes and designs were researched as well as prices on the internet in order for us to create a survey for the public. The survey was distributed at each of the school parents' evenings. The feedback was very successful each night with 100% of the participants claiming that they would pur purchase our product. To promote our product, an advanced hire art and design student from our school designed an advertisement which was featured in the Highland News. A lot of our promotion depended on a word of mouth as our product gains a positive reputation. Uh, I could come out here and slate all of the other companies, <laughs> or we could have spent thousands on an overemphasized presentation, but we didn't want to take it too far. <laughs> now, let's get down to the serious number crunching. Shares were exclusively owned by members of our team. This helped us to be more motivated to make more profit as we worked for our own dividends. We received an exceptionally charitable donation of £100 from the one and only David Sutherland. Our initial shares only raised uh, £11 as we decided to sell food and drink at our school-sponsored work. This brought in an additional £52. The company utilised a bank account facility with the school which made it easier to keep track of our finances and access them when needed. Our overall growth, gross profit margin was 72% which was in fact lowered when we took into account the selling of the food and drink compared to the colossal profit we made from the slate. As well as our sales of nearly £1,100, we also had £200 of other income. This includes the £100 from the aforementioned famous David Sutherland and, of course, £100 worth of prizes we received for being the second best company at the last Young Enterprise presentation. Overheads other than purchases include £130 to Young Enterprise, £100 for a subcontractor who turned out to be more useless than a chocolate fire guard, <laughs> and, a very, and we very kindly gave £52 worth of gifts to people who helped us along the way. The rest of our hard-earned money went straight into our back pockets uh, as wages, so we didn't have to pay any sneaky taxes to young enterprises. <laughs> Everyone knows our company sank like the Titanic, as word, uh, as word spread quicker than the news of Saba bin Laden's death. <laughs> but to show such profits emphasises our comeback, uh, almost at the scale of Chelsea's in the Premiership. But can we win our Premiership? That's up for the wonderful <laughs> judging panel to decide. It is fair to say that Graphite as a company has experienced both positive and negative times. 
On a positive note, we managed to come up with a product that was unique and varied, that used recycled materials and also offered consumers a choice that was unavailable elsewhere on the market. This level of choice came with a price, one that benefited our profit margins, for firstly consumers were willing to pay more, and secondly it attracted more consumers in general. Yet it also came with a price that impacted negatively upon our company. Initially we struggled to cope with the level of demand for the product, the level of choice we provided caused too much hassle with our subcontractors and eventually we lost control of them completely. But this was mainly through lack of communication, I'd like to say on their part. <laughs> Overall, our company has succeeded in making a profit and therefore has fulfilled the uh, main aim of any private company. Yet we feel we did not reach our full potential because of this, uh, because of the unexpected mishaps. It can also be said that we became victims of our own success, as we had to cease orders being taken completely, not follow up interest from companies, and not even create a stockpile for the Christmas trade fair. Despite our misfortune, however, we have been part of a company which has managed to combat all the problems along the way. If we have learned anything, Graphite have learned not to be naive and always to get every single detail in writing. We would like to thank our teacher, Mr. McDonald, for guiding us through the stages of the Young Enterprise Scheme, and also our, and also Julian Sharp, our business advisor, and Willie Sharp for gifting us all the slate for which we could not have functioned. Finally, thank you all for having to listen to us. <laughs> thank you. They know the format. <laughs> you they know the it. format. A couple of questions. Is anyone here related to David Sutherland? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> we just thought he'd be here so we can get him <laughs> Yeah, he did a good job. We thought our teacher liked him a lot. Promoting his generosity. Uh, and secondly, we put our tax accountant here tonight, and I think he'd like to have a word with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, the product is fantastic. Um, the production quality is first class. And I'd like to ask how you managed the quality control of your products? Uh, the product spoke for itself. The consumers demanded high quality, so we just kept going because of our sales. We were driven by profit like any business should be, so we just kept to the hit sales. That could lead to shortcutting in, in the production process and, and compromising the quality of your product. Consistently, every single one I've seen has been top-notch. Yeah, as an so error, how did you how did you control the quality? Our output? mission statement stated that we wanted to not only make a profit but also to provide a high-quality product. So, although we wanted our key aim was to make a profit, we knew that a worthwhile cost would be keeping the product the same quality throughout. And we think that was one of the main assets we had as a business was that the high quality of our product. And what led to the decision to outsource the engraving of the product? It was basically um, a lot, when we did our market research, a lot of the slate that would be our competition was just plain. And if so, it only offered maybe one or like design. So we actually knew that our teacher in our school who had the laser engraver had kind of experimented with different designs and things. So we just decided to utilise that source that we knew we already had close to hand. And is it true that the raw material was all donated to yeah, you? Yes, it was all slate uh, offcuts from right. Willie Sharps. Right. With his slate. Is he here tonight? No, no. Uh, no. But, but we had priced it if we had to buy it in because due to our setbacks we realised that in business it's always beneficial to have plan B and that would have only put our cost of production up by 30 pence because we would have got six coasters per slate that we'd bought in. Right, that was my next question. How, if you had to buy the raw material, how would the bottom line be affected for the business? Um, it would have only decreased our profit margin by 8%, which means we still would have made a large profit even if we'd had to buy it in. And what's the profit year to date? Uh, it was an 88% profit margin. Actual? Uh, it was £586 before we sold uh, more, uh, last of our, uh, £68 of our last stock to the wonderful judges that were <laughs> that kindly donated to our cause today. Fantastic. Well done. Good Thank, Thank you. Thank you.